G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder and welcome back to Apex Predators. Today we're going to have a look at one of the new jets that were added to rank 8 and that is the MiG-29. The MiG-29 is probably the most hyped plane this patch and is unfortunately the biggest disappointment as a result. On the dev server the MiG-29 had R-73s which were analogous to the AIM-9L except they weren't really, they were better. They were buffed to an incredible level to the point where you were unable to flare them, even at uh, front aspect, and that made the R-73s strong enough for the Gaijin to remove them. Having removed the R-73s leaves them with the R-27T and R-27R, and of course the R-27T is the one that we will be using in today's video. I have tried using the R-27R and the radar has let me down, and we will get into that in a little bit. but. For now, we are stuck with two uh, R60Ms on each wing, giving us a total of four, and of course two R27Ts. Now the R27 is a brother to the R24, which you might be familiar with on the MiG-23 MLD. And of course, uh, if you are looking to pick up a premium to grind the MiG-29 or any other planes, um, they are expensive, I don't recommend it, but if you are, decal link in the description below for a 3% discount and my decal. That goes to greatly supporting the channel, and uh, this might actually be one of the last games that are played at 1080p. Um, you might see it rendered at 4K, but I am unfortunately playing at 1080p. Hopefully the extra clarity and the increase in bitrate will allow me to provide nicer, crispier, and, and uh, cleaner videos for you guys. That's my whole aim with this thing. It's uh, a great privilege to be supported by something like that. So without further ado, the MiG-29, I did say it was a disappointment and I honestly do stand by that. The plane itself is okay. The performance is okay. It's a little bit quick, uh, about 1500 at sea level, you know, just a little bit. And uh, that is pretty much as fast as we get at this battle rating and in fact, it throughout the whole game. Uh, it is pretty much only outrun by missiles at this point, which you'll never have a plane that outruns the missiles. I'm sorry, we are not getting the SR-71s. So the uh, MiG-29 has a very, very good ability to gain lots of energy early on in the in the match, and, and that's kind of what I have to use in this, in this circumstance to really shine through. Now, I have got the R27Rs here, but honestly, I don't really feel like they are nearly as useful as the R60s and the R27T. The R27T is the IR guided version of the R27R, which is, uh, you know, fairly straightforward to think about. The other thing that this plane has is a, as you can tell, it's got a radar, and the radar is probably, uh, I would say it's a little disappointing, to be honest. It's not particularly strong. It is not, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't really find it very inspiring, to be honest. Uh, you can see there that the missiles tend to just sort of know where they are, and uh, because they know where they're not. And honestly, that leaves you a little bit sort of salty. These missiles, for some odd reason, have a bit of a mind of their own, and I believe that that is down to the radar. AIM-7s tend to have a really, really strong guidance capability. I don't know what it is, but they just tend to work a lot of the time, and I just genuinely don't understand why other missiles, particularly the Matra Magic uh, Super 530Ds, um, they tend to have a mind of their own. The R27Rs have a bit of a mind of their own. I just genuinely do not understand what is going on. It must be a, a bug within the game, but because we have to look at the game as how it is instead of how it should be, we, I would, I would personally not recommend using the R27Rs. I just don't think that they are reliable enough. And of course, with the radar that we are given, it is way too easy to notch your opponents. And this is the main gripe that I have with these missiles. They, it's, it's not necessarily the missiles at all because the R27Ts are perfectly capable. It's the radar that they come with. Now, I have had a lot of issue with this particular radar. I just haven't been able to lock my opponents with nearly as potent a lock. Maybe I'm using uh, an incorrect mode. Maybe I don't have it set to the right range. I don't really know. I'm still trying to figure that out. But for now, I just don't really see a feasibility towards it. It's just something that I can't recommend. What you should do though, is you should get a little bit of altitude, go around the back of the map and use your really, really high speed to surprise your opponents that are climbing or engaging other enemies. Like I said in the F4EJ Kai video, which you should absolutely totally watch by the way, um, 
the best way to fool players that are firing semi-active radar homing missiles is to engage them while they're not engaging you, while they're engaging someone else. And that is simply the single best tactic to employ here. So if you can find someone who is engaging another aircraft with a semi-active radar homing missile, take them out, you can potentially save a teammate as well as getting yourself a cheeky kill. Now in this situation here, it looks like we're in a little bit of a down tier. We are facing a fair amount of sort of 11.0s and uh, maybe some 10.7s thrown in the mix. But the uh, MiG-29 is, it's got so much more engine power than all of these enemies here. I'm going to use the head mounted display to track the Su-17 and the MiG-23 here. It's pretty much a done deal. Uh, we're going to get one on the way and another one on the way, and hopefully both of those land nice and smooth. There we go, two easy, easy kills right off the bat. The MiG-27 is coming in hot. It looks like he's gonna be firing an R60. There it is, I'm gonna pop some flares, and for some odd reason, I managed to get the upper hand here. I, I don't really know what happens there. I think, genuinely so, I am just luckier. Um, I just got more skilled, you know? But the uh, guy ends up dying not at my hands, but at someone else's. But that's okay. I've got another R60M heading straight for that F-104G. Again, this is a bit of a massacre because we are fighting planes that are really not on this plane's league. However, I do find that this plane is fairly suited to, in terms of its missiles, fighting other planes of this sort of capability, simply because the missiles are not particularly amazing. I, I find the MiG-29 to just sort of not have a really great set of missiles and honestly you can you can defeat this plane with six flares all it takes is six and all you have to do is just fly in a straight line exactly like this mig 23 ml and the r60ms are so flare horny that they will literally go anywhere you can just see all the r60ms darting in and out between the flares and i seriously find this frustrating having to deal with this every single match makes the mig 29 a very frustrating plane to fly and i would honestly rather just fight something else. I don't even want to bother flying the MiG-29 simply because I have to make sure that every time I fire a missile, the enemy is not going to flare. I have to predict the future for some odd damn reason, and I just don't really want to go through the hassle of dealing with that. Instead, I'm just going to burt this guy to death, and we have four easy kills, but I think that showing you the potential of these missiles, or rather the lack thereof, is a really good way of demonstrating my frustrations with the plane. It's honestly not terrible. If it had better missiles, I seriously would consider recommending everyone play and grind it. And over the last couple of days where I've been trying some different aircraft, the MiG-29 has very much fallen into disrepute. I actually don't see anyone playing it. And when they do, they're pretty much easy food right from the get-go. I find this really sad because this plane really does have the potential to be an excellent machine. It just needs the right tools. And unfortunately, it has them taken away. And of course, you might be thinking the R73s in the state that they were on the second dev server, but honestly, I genuinely think just a slightly better R73 uh, from the first dev server would have been fine. Uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly what is best for this particular plane, what is most historically accurate, but honestly, being defeated by six flares is so infuriating that this plane has no longer been a fixture in the War Thunder Matchmaker. And it's just going to continue to drop off the face of the earth if Gaijin doesn't do something to make it competitive, either by making the radar a little bit more powerful or, I don't know, it's just not quite the same. There is just some level of inadequacy in the MiG-29 that just needs to be addressed, and that's mostly in the form of its potency. It just does not have potent missiles, and you are just going to be shit out of luck every single time you try and make something work with this plane. And you know what? That's really, really frustrating. It's just something that would be a deal breaker for me. And I'll, I'll get to a video on the uh, F-14 and the F-16, but I genuinely think these planes are so much more enjoyable to fly simply because they don't require as much stress and as much anticipation. And if the MiG-29 wasn't like that, then it would be fine. It would be a great plane to fly. The performance is good, the energy retention is good, the top speed is great, and it's got enough flares to ward off as many enemy attacks as you can possibly think of. It's got enough fuel range, it's got decent performance. Honestly, even at low speed, it is a fairly decent flyer for the airframe. I, I like it. 
I don't mind it. It just doesn't have great missiles, and the missiles are really the thing that makes a plane at top tier. You can have a shit performing Airbus bus turd plane like the Mirage F1C, but if you gave it Python 3s, then it would be an absolutely insane plane. The point is that this plane does not have those capabilities, and it is really frustrating to me. I honestly just wish it was a little bit better, but I don't really know the solution. I'm pretty confident that this plane, at least in the early versions, could not use uh, more than four R27s, sorry, more than two R27s, um, and there are no other suitable missiles for this plane. So I genuinely don't have a solution here. And that really makes me sad because this plane needs a solution really, really badly. It's just, I don't know what it is. And I seriously don't know what the best thing to do for this plane is. In the meantime though, you can play around it and give it a go and try and use this plane to its best advantage. And currently the best thing to do with this plane is to use its speed. It's a pretty fast boy, and whilst it doesn't turn very well, you can still skirt around the outsides of the battlefield and avoid your opponents coming in and sort of dealing damage that way. Now, I have thought recently of using six R60Ms, but honestly, I kind of like the range on the R23s. It's kind of like an AIM-9G or an AIM-9 uh, or a PL-5B in terms of its playstyle, in terms of its range, and uh, reminding me very much so of the J8B in terms of its playstyle. Very, very strong engine power, very, very high potential for damage, but a very low capability in terms of its radar and in terms of other uh, sort of facets of this plane. So looking at the gameplay here, we have an F-16. I'm very confident that this plane is going to start flaring, but if he is able to sort of get on the other side of his opponents, which is exactly what's happened here, I'm going to send an R23T, and I'm going to send an R23T at the F4J, but unfortunately for me, the F4J has uh, managed to evade those uh, missiles because he flared. Uh, but the F16 wasn't so uh, fortunate. He's clearly got his dick in his hand or something like that, so that works very, very well for me. I'm going to switch off the afterburner really quick, go for a cheeky missile here. I don't know how I got that. I suppose the uh, F-14 was sort of horny for me. Um, and now we've got some uh, radar missiles coming in nice and hot. So I'm going to fly in underneath them. I'm going to keep up the speed because I know I don't have enough acceleration to get away from F-16s if they decide to come in. Um, and I'm going to fly underneath just to sort of skirt under the radar of any F-14s. Uh, it looks like this F-16 is going to come in and it is looking super juicy. So I'm going to turn the gun at, or turn the the head mounted display towards the F-16 here, send the missile his way and hope to God that he doesn't flare at the last second, which he doesn't. So he does not pay attention and therefore pays the repair cost. Very, very convenient for me. Uh, but is this MiG-21 going to do the same thing? I'm just gonna avoid that, uh, <laughs> that uh, lock on the friendly there, but it looks like we could potentially get that. And I'm a little ambitious on the missile here, not leading it enough. And with so much speed and so much inertia, I managed to sort of stuff up the kill. Now, the situation here is looking pretty good for us, but there are still several enemies that are coming in, and a lot of them have pulse Doppler capabilities. The F-14 has actually fired a missile and it's heading directly towards me, so I'm gonna switch the uh, switch the afterburner off, and this is actually gonna give me a little bit more turning performance. I have noticed that when you do switch the afterburner off, you are able to dump a little bit more speed, uh, throw away that compression, and as a result, get yourself into a situation where you can potentially get some more kills, uh, potentially move out of the way of those deadly, deadly AIM-7 Sparrows. Now, the F-14 is looking very, very much like he's not paying attention. Uh, he is set on fire, though, so I'm not going to go for him. And the F-4J is flaring, and it's just too close to that sort of uh, green zone, I'd like to call it. So I'm just going to go around and see if I can get another round on him. The F4J is a potential to get, you know, a nice little R60 up the bum. But uh, there is also another enemy plane in play. So I do have to keep an eye out. And of course, at the same time, I can still sit behind the F4J and use my gun. So it's not quite the end of the world. And I don't really have to wait and uh, sort of just do whatever but the f4 is i, I want to try and get him to i want to try and spook him and, and and make him think that yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna launch radar missile at him 
So he's not really doing anything right now, and I'm going to take a guess and say that he's out of flares. And I think he actually is. So I'm going to close the gap. I'm going to see if I can make him dogfight, and then I'm going to fire the one missile that is really, really strong in dogfighting range. And of course, it manages to make a hit and makes a nice little kill for our last match of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the MiG-29. I think it is a pretty rubbishy plane, but honestly, you can give it a go and sort of get used to it. It's very frustrating, but seriously, I think that a couple of improvements are overdue for this plane. I think it could benefit from a couple of missiles. Uh, let me know in the comment section below, maybe R-73s with a little bit of nerf in them might actually not be that bad for the game. But thank you very much for your time. I sincerely appreciate it. Take care. And I'll catch you next time.